Hi everyone. Welcome to Living Our Values Online. This is how the middle school helps students live their values online. We previously talked about the value of responsibility. We talked about how students have to remember to be responsible with their safety, privacy, and security, as well as being responsible with their digital habits of balance and separation. But now, I'd like to talk about the ASD value of respect. We can think about respect online as the intersection of two different but related topics respect for others, and respect for myself. Let's approach each of these separately. If I'm a student who wants to show respect for others, I have to be concerned with how my actions online affect other people. I want to make sure that I'm adding positive interactions to the online world and minimizing negative ones. Again, as a student, I have to understand that when I'm online, I might feel more removed from people that I'm communicating with, so I might need to be even more cautious with my words and how they might be taken, because they'll be separated from tone or body language or context, which are important elements of communication. Essentially, I have to be concerned, even more concerned, with how others are impacted by my words or actions online. Now, as a parent, how would I do this? I'd ask my child to consider several questions regarding respect. Let's take a look at a few of these. For example, children should ask if they're showing respect for their parents by sharing their online activities and accounts. I ask students this in school. An easy way for a parent to do this would be to notice when your child's online and just ask them to show you how they're using whatever platform they're on. If they're on a chat, if they're on Facebook, whatever it is. Just say, hey, I noticed you're on Facebook. Why don't you show me some of the stuff that you're doing? Again, it can be a little uncomfortable because a natural feeling in students at this age is they want a little more distance from their parents. But they still have to understand that we're concerned with what they do online and we want to help them and be there for them. As a parent, do you share some of your activities and accounts? It's fairly easy to build that relationship. You don't need to share everything you do. It could be just as simple as saying, hey, come take a look at this funny cat video that I was watching. What that does is it builds an openness of relationship and it makes it more prone for your child to share their information with you. Another question that students should ask is, are they showing respect for their peers through what they say online? Now this is a good time to go over samples of what your son or daughter chats online with, or if they're posting on Facebook, or whatever it is they're doing. Take a look at what they do. Keep in mind, however, that most children don't want to show their parents what they're doing, not because they're concerned with themselves, but because they're concerned with what their friends say. So they don't want you to look at the chat that they've gone on with with three or four friends and then notice that one friend has used some language they shouldn't be using and then for you to get too upset. That's a talking point. That's something that you want to talk about with your son or daughter. Another question that children should ask is, are they the same respectful person online as they are offline? We'll actually approach this question a little later when we have a section in honesty. Now, one caveat here. We're tempted to only ask these questions when we think there's a problem, but what we should be doing is asking these questions beforehand to build a positive habit. We want our sons and daughters to feel good about the responses to these questions and keep building that positive feeling. For example, if I think my son is showing respect for me by sharing his online activities with me, I should celebrate that by asking him the question like, hey son, do you show me this stuff? And he says, yeah, I do. So then he feels good about that and he wants to do more of it rather than feeling ashamed. We don't want these questions to be negative. We want them to be positive and celebrate positive interactions. Let's look at the other element of respect, which is the reputation. Now, while some people have heard of the metaphor of the digital footprint to emphasize what their, how their presence is being felt through digital space, I actually prefer the metaphor of the digital tattoo because, as many tattoos, Things said online can often be done in haste or in an emotional state, and they can be quite difficult to undo, and the effects can be long-lasting. As a student, what I want to do is show my future self respect by ensuring that my actions today only positively impact my reputation tomorrow. So how am I going to encourage that as a parent? Well, as a parent, I'd want to ask my son or daughter some of these questions. Am I showing respect for myself and my future reputation through my actions online? And how should I censor myself if I know that what I post can be saved, copied, reposted, and distributed forever? That's 
actually important for students to learn, and it's something that catches kids off guard. They think that when they delete something, it's gone, but that's very rarely the case, especially if it's shared with many other people who can quickly take a screenshot, copy, paste, change, do whatever they want to it. So they should be very careful about censoring themselves because really, anything they post can be there forever. So another question I'd want my children to ask is, how would I post if I knew that I can never be anonymous? This is another misconception kids have. They think that they can be anonymous by using a certain method online or by using an account they don't need to sign into, but really anything they post can always be traced back to wherever it was they were when they did it. So that's something that kids need to learn and it can save them some heartache later on. They need to remember that they can never be anonymous so that they should be careful about how they post. A final question I would want my children to ask themselves is, what if my father or mother or principal or college or even my future employer saw my posts? Increasingly, there are institutions in the world like colleges and employers that are employing a staff of people who check applicants. So they look at their backgrounds. They want to make sure the people they're hiring represent their brand and represent the morals or values that they provide. So hopefully you've gotten a little value in talking about respect today. Don't forget to copy and paste the link in the text if you'd like a paper copy of the refrigerator agreement that you can use to have a dinner table discussion with your child, and maybe even come to a group decision about a specific set of house guidelines for online use at home. See you next time when we'll approach the ASD value of honesty.